guys saw Jack last night at Third Lens League. <laughs> Um, fantastic show, I heard many of you guys put up pictures for that, and uh, Jack has since hurt his back since then, <laughs> since he walked off stage for that. Yes, um, I saw a picture on Facebook today of me playing a note, and I'm all crooked and bend over, and uh, that's what I did it right there. <laughs> that high note. <laughs> it's feeling better than um, so honored to have Jack here with us, and we'll, we'll play a little bit, we'll talk a little bit. If you guys have questions about things, just kind of uh, shout them on out, and uh, Jack will uh, answer as many questions as we can. Um, Thank you. 
beautiful little amps that Will McFarland plays their little prints in it. I think it's got like a Oh yeah, I've got a secret. champ, like face champ I use a lot. And uh, I have an old silver tone amp that's like 15 watts like a deluxe. Yeah. It's a beautiful sound. But for live, I like this one. Yeah. He records nice. Yes, Paul. Yeah, so last night you uh, you played three different guitars. You had the, I guess it's the same red one you were playing today. And yeah, I played this one last A night. white one and uh, another one, I don't remember the color. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, why did you play a different guitar on a particular They each tone? have a different tone, I think, tone? and they feel different. Of course, uh, with the telly, I try to mimic my hero, Roy Buchanan, you know, yeah. so. Uh, it's not alternate to tuning. Yeah, it's, it's, the color matches the song. Yeah, it's got a totally different. Uh, this tonality. Thing, yeah, and uh, though I have a white strat, I brought it today too, but uh, it's my main guitar. But this one has a little bit different mid range to it, so it's really. And I've used it for some alternate tunings last night also. Can you take us through just the, the sounds of each pickup selection? Yeah. <laughs> Such a fit. <laughs> I bought it for you. <laughs> and, uh, 
So I guess I just always want to play. Mark, did you have a question back there? I thought I saw a hand. Yeah. Uh, Jack, thanks for being here. Love your playing. My question is, uh, when you're improvising, how far ahead is your brain from your fingers with the notes you want to play? I mean, are you already in the response in your mind when you're doing the call? I mean, how... how it, it's a little of everything. Sometimes I surprise myself. I go, oh, what was that? <laughs> That's when you're really improvising. You know what I mean? And, <laughs> but you got to have a, a pretty big vocabulary of, you know, your favorite licks and things. And, uh, you know, like that blues we played. We played so many variations of the 12-bar chord changes, you know, because you can do all of that against different chords. But, yeah, I'm, I mean, I'll, I've got my favorite licks I'll fall back on, but when I'm really improvising, I don't know what I'm doing, you know, and it's a surprise, and uh, it keeps me young. <laughs> but, you can't always do that on some music, you know. I've been fired a lot for doing that in band. <laughs> I got fired from the opera a couple of years ago for improvising too much. <laughs> I did. <laughs> yes, in the corner, question. When did you come to be with the Allman Brothers? Um, they were my favorite band when I was growing up, so I learned all of their stuff. And a friend of mine, Warren Haynes, had just joined the band. I'm like, how come there wasn't any auditions? You know? <laughs> but uh, anyhow, uh, I think he joined the band in 88, and then in 93, Dickie had to go to rehab, so Warren called me and asked me if I'd come out there and play. So that's how I met all those guys. It was through Warren Hayes. And uh, Greg and I hit it off, and I started playing in Greg's solo band when Dickie came back to tour. And uh, we did that for, I see, that was in 93, and then I'll never forget the day Greg called and uh, it was in 1997, he said, Hey man, you want to join the Allman Brothers? And I said, Yeah. <laughs> Let me think about that. Yeah. <laughs> but it was such a shock, it took me like, I don't know, maybe two seconds to answer. <laughs> but uh, anyhow, that's how all that started. Then I had... I have tonight, it's really bad ringing in my ears, and it got worse when I was in the Auburn Brothers because the stage volume was just incredible. Um, Dickie was using like three 100 watt marshals through the JBLs. And it wasn't even in the PA, it was all coming off the stage, you know. And I was wearing earplugs, but it was just beyond that. You know, it goes around the bones and gets into your ear. But anyhow, that's why I, I had to quit the band. Still bothers me. Yeah. So, but you've, it's gotten a little bit better. You were saying? No, it's actually gotten worse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was at a fair mind <laughs> back in April, and it just put me over the edge. Is there anything you can do for it when it gets when it starts acting up? No, I've got earplugs in right now. Anything that sets it off. Really? Yeah. Because I know some some folks wrestle wrestle with that. You know. And yeah, I have a couple of friends that had to pretty much drop out. Yeah. Roger Hawkins. Yeah. Yeah, I've tried some supplements and stuff, but it hasn't really worked yet. Yeah. Yes, sir. What was the story behind the beautiful acoustic piece you did last night? Did you play? You were just warming up. Was that all improvisation? Oh, at the beginning. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> I should have kept it going, but in the middle of it, I thought, oh, I want to play Midnight Rider for Greg Alvin. So I tuned down and did that. Yeah, I should have kept on with the first thing. It was nice. <laughs> it's a loose thing, you know, it's a high pressure show. <laughs> no, I, and my band is the same way. We just play whatever we want to play. And it's my favorite band I've ever had yeah. or been in. And uh, got Josh Hunt on drums and Charles Treadway on B3. Yeah. yeah. We, I mean, we improvise all night. I mean, we play our songs, but it comes out different every time. Yeah. 
I remember when I was in a band, I was probably about 18, and in between the songs, I said, let's play something we've never played. They were, thought I was talking about a song. I'm like, no, let's play something we've never played. I mean, all our instruments. <laughs> I've always just wanted it. Yeah. yeah. Um, it took me a long time to be able to can you Can you just play us a little solo piece? Do you have anything in sure. You can rip out just solo? <laughs> Say whatever you want to do.
switch songs, but. Well, how do you play? He said, 
I don't know how, but you need to learn. <laughs> His, his love, he loved music, but he loved drag racing, so he built his own engines and cars and stuff, so he was really into that. But, uh, but he made me memorize the notes on the neck, he gave me a chart of that, and gave me a slide. And, and then he would make me learn solos off the records and show them to him. <laughs> so that pretty much set me up. Um, talk to us a little bit about slide playing. But Oh yeah, so I, I tried every finger. Yeah, you know, when I was learning, and uh, and then I heard that Dwayne Allman and you know, maybe Sun House or somebody like that used their third finger, and when I tried that, it, it felt like I had more control over it, and uh, when I put it on my little finger, it made me have to use my, bend my hand down like this, if you know most people that play, they do that, but with this one, it just felt more natural. And then I found out that, well, you have to build strength to be able to keep it off of the strings, but I found out I could play all these chords. I can't reach some of those voicings if it's on the little finger, right? You can't get that seventh at all. But with this, it's right there. Slide into, into some of the Oh, yeah, yeah. So I, I, you know, I don't, I play slide and regular at the same time. Yeah. Plus, with it on the third finger, I can play octaves and stuff. action because I just want to play on the, my normal guitar and so I, you have to find a slide that fits your finger and I like this Dunlop 210 model and uh, it just kind of floats I don't push down hard and you're doing but you're also doing some muting down here with your yeah, I'm right with my right hand. If I'm used, I, some stuff I play with a pick. It's a different sound. And then I'll put the pick between these two fingers, and then I'll use my fingers to play. But I'm always blocking whichever string I'm not plucking. So if I'm, I'm playing the fourth string. <laughs> These fingers are touching the high strings and my sound thumbs, thumbs. Yes. And it just kind of developed over time. Uh, in my 20s, somebody asked me to give them a slide lesson. They said, what are you doing with your right hand? I'm like, I don't know. I didn't think about it much, you know. And it was a really learning experience to try to decipher what was going on. So I have a couple of patterns and uh, one thing I found, almost everyone I've talked slide to, this alternating lick, it's easier to do with your thumb and middle finger than it is with the thumb and first finger. I mean, I can do it with both, but I can go faster. And all of my students have been able to go faster too. So it's weird. Yeah. It must be a beginning slide player. Greg Mason plays like that. Yeah, he plays like he's, He does, um, we were just talking about this, the finger thumb thumb thumb. Thumb. Yeah, uh, thumb two, and then he'll do thumb two, three. Right, a little bit two, yeah. But the fast stuff is just these. Fast stuff. It's the same thing that I do with the slide. So. And somebody told me it was a classical tape. Is that true? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I use, I was just telling the finger style class, style class I do exactly the same thing. I do thumb and two because okay. thumb and one is just a little bit more awkward. Yeah, you can't do that. Unless you're Reverend Gary Davis. <laughs> <laughs> if you were starting out on slide, what are some things that was like keeping in tune and things like that? How? Yeah, what when I started, I, uh, open E tuning and open G tuning are the easiest because uh, you don't have to dampen as much with your right hand, and so I would suggest that. But I, I started playing a lot in standard tuning because I didn't have time to 
change tunings in some of the bands I was in, so I just had to try to figure out how to do it. But it's, it is much harder to play in standard tuning because, uh, you know, with the open tunings, you have all the notes on one fret, you know, but uh, with the standard, you don't. Let's talk about bends for a second. Um, when, when you're bending, kind of talk us through some of the muscle coordination stuff. Because you can do pretty wide bends, you know, a step and a half or, or, or yeah, something. Yeah, sometimes I'll go three or four frets and yeah. bends. And, uh, but yeah, I'll practice, I'll play it like an A note, go down a half step and bend it up to it to get the intonation right. Go down two frets. That's three frets. But it's easier to bend that far if you're up higher. What what uh, gauge of strings are you using? Uh, this is a nine, but it's a twelve on the B string. I don't like the eleven. That's too light. So it's nine, twelve, sixteen, twenty-four, thirty-two, fourteen. Special set. I mean, you there's. Well, no, I have to buy a second. Buy a second, second set. Yeah, and change it out. Yeah. I don't know why they do that. Most of the companies go nine, eleven, sixteen, but it's not balanced. Yeah. So, same, same type of for sound. 40 years, I have to change the beat string. On all your guitars, same. Yeah, thing. so now I get I buy them uh, singles. Yeah. Yeah. But um, no, some guitars I have 10s, some I have 11s. On acoustic, I use 12s. That old silver tone, I have 11s on it. Uh, <coughs> you know, the 11s set and the 10 set are balanced, but the 9s. <laughs> I bet you they don't play guitar. <laughs> and they won't listen to me. <laughs> Can you illustrate a few, just do some stuff with bands? Yeah, so and when I'm bending it. with my third finger, I'm always backing it up with the second. So I can't bend this string just with my third finger. It, it hurts. So I'll use these two fingers. Right? And I use this side of my hand to uh, as a fulcrum for the leverage. some time on the intonation. And also try to make it cry as much with a half step as I can a whole step. second as strength, you know, on the fret behind it. As, you, as, you're, as you're playing those, it takes a lot of control. It takes a lot of practice to be able to get those in tune. Right. So, uh, and I know for me, if I don't bend a whole lot for a season, then I, I kind of have to build the muscle back up and get to where Yeah, going. I mean, and, and you know, playing traditional jazz, you're not supposed to bend strength. <laughs> I do now, but when I was first playing that, I was like, how am I going to stop bending strings? <laughs> so, yeah. it's interesting. Talk to us a little bit about sustain, because you're able to get such good sustain, even without you know, the compliments of pedals and gear and whatnot, uh, just through your touch. Yeah, I, I hardly ever play through an amp at home. I, I just practice this. Like this. So, I'm trying to make the guitar... make it ring as long as you can by yourself without the amp's help, then when you get the amp, it's a distortion, it'll really ring. That's pretty cool. So it's not, it's not a static motion. You see, you can hold the note and then you kind of milk yeah, it there. A little little, 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 yeah, little. and that's what gives it a little bit more. That's what that 
Yeah. It lasts a little bit longer. Yeah. And also, I don't hit the string so hard. So if I hit it hard, it says fatter and lasts longer if I use a medium attack. That's soft. Oh, it's different when you pick it. The V pick. It's a, yeah, it's a 140. And, uh, or is it uh, uh, Wigan? Wigan, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. W E G E. W E G E M. They're made overseas somewhere. Yeah, somewhere in Europe. Yeah. And uh, I wrote the guy, I told him how much I liked his picks. He never had some things. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted him to know that I loved his picks. And uh, but they come in black and white. I think the white sounds better. <laughs> <laughs> you don't see them around very much. Russ Berenberg uh, turned me on to uh, yeah. wagon picks. Yeah. And uh, especially for kind of flat picking kind of stuff. Yeah. You know, first time I saw, well, I think I have. Many first time I saw, uh, saw the bluegrass guys use them. Yeah. Like, That's cool. And then I saw a video of Chris Thaley talking about it. Yeah. 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 Let's see if we can hear the difference. <laughs>
And then if you <laughs> what was all that stuff that you were doing there? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's kind of like how I do the Wawa thing. You just, you just let the pick just touch out a little bit so the side of your finger touches the string yeah. at the same time. kind of makes it... I can't do it. <laughs> So many players do that different ways. Like you're doing it with your, I mean, you have a pick, but it's also touching with your first finger. I have the pick and the side of my thumb at the same time. Inside of your thumb at the same so time. The side of my thumb is doing the, uh, the harmonic. That way too, just touch the string with your thumb as you plug. I do it with my the, touching the top of this nail, so I play. That's the only way I could figure out how to do it. I don't know how you could do it with the first finger. That screwed me up. Well, I'm not, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it with my finger. The You're doing the sun. And the side of the thumb. Now, when I'm, I'm doing an upstroke, I'm using the pick and my finger. Yeah. That's why I'm getting two different sounds. Can't do it when you want to. <laughs> it's hit and miss. Sometimes it won't do it. The other night I was in the middle of a solo and I went, and it just clubbed. <laughs> <laughs> Harmonics are, tri are tricky things. Yeah, Roy Buchanan was the best at it. Yeah. I've seen some uh, finger style guys. Uh, we had him on the show. Pierre Ben Susan is from France. Are you familiar with him? Oh, gosh. <coughs> World Guitarist of the Year. Guitar Player Magazine's World Guitarist of the Year a few years back. And he would just be playing this stuff, and then he would just go beep, 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 beep. And I thought, whoa, what? <laughs> how did you do that? I'm, I know a little bit about guitar. I have no idea how you did that. And he was just, you know, playing around with it, and eventually you get accurate at it. And you just, dee 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 dee, and you got another bog. There were some harmonics up there. I thought, that's what really I saw somebody do this, right? You know, so it's just that harmonic. Right there. Oh, wow, how cool is that? <laughs> and it helps when you have a little bit of distortion on it. That kind of excites those harmonics a little bit more. So this guy, was he doing the. Acoustic. 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 Yeah. yeah. So he, was he hitting these harmonics? Yeah, and he just kind of went ding, 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 just kept hitting them up here. And I thought, oh, that's you know how hard that is to catch that exactly. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, Jeff Beck, he'll take the slide and go up here and play melodies. He knows exactly where all those high notes are, way up here. And um, very accurate. Uh, do you do much with false harmonics or the cascading? Sort of no, stuff. Okay. It's tough. It's not a technique I've done very I, much of. I've tried it a few times. I hadn't put enough hours in. You know. When you're when you're trying to learn a new song, how do you how do you approach tackling it? Um, like an instrumental song, like maybe a <laughs> Gary Davis song or something like that. How do you just approach grabbing the the older I get, the harder it's getting to be to do that. You know? <laughs> I used to have so much patience to sit with the turntable and scratch records, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the last Gary Davis thing I learned probably was Oh Glory. Or, or that, uh, Play a little bit of it. If you can. That, what was that? Yeah. Cincinnati rag? <laughs> but just to get that little movement, Little 
movement, you know, syncopated and It's 
special each slide, you know. Nothing I would carry around. Cool. Anything else? Uh, Greg, what do you I've got? I've got all kinds of slides. You know, you just have to find what works for you. I've heard you mention on a couple different occasions where you've talked about wiring the tone to the back pickup instead of having it for both. Right. Is there a particular reason you chose to do that? Yeah, I, I just like the way it sounds better, and I'm always rolling this down and up to get different tones out of the bridge pickup. And uh, if it's wired to the middle one, this one's just wide open. Uh, I'd rather not have a tone on the middle pickup. Some people put it on both, but then um, if I have this rolled down on the bridge, like go to the middle. If it was still wired to it, it would be too dark. Yeah. So it's just a preference for me. But when I'm in the second and fourth position, yeah, the fourth position, then it affects both pickups. So it's just one wire you have to switch. When you take it open, there's a wire loose, and see which color is coming from this to the switch, and just move it over one lug. So that is only affecting that back pickup. Then. Right. So yeah. This one tone affects the neck pickup. This tone affects the bridge pickup. It's so the middle, left on the middle. Nothing on the middle. But if you're in the second or fourth position, these tones affect both pickups. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So I think it's more versatile. Yeah. It seems like that would be more natural. And who needs a tone control on the middle pickup? Yeah. <laughs> well, so we had a question over here. Yes. Uh, when I was at your show last night, I met a girl who said she was a friend of yours. Her name is Beth. Came over, gave her a hug, and he actually, she actually introduced us to her. And she then, as she walked away, she said, "I really hope Jack has cake tonight. He always brings cake to the shows." And sure yeah, enough, I'll, sure I'll, enough, I'll, we we'll bring a cake set, every once in a while. Every, so everybody come down and have a piece of cake. So yeah. I guess it's a party. Let's bring cake for your audience. Yeah. <laughs> it started uh, had a birthday show, and you know, there was two or three cakes there, and I'm like, "We need to do this every gig." <laughs> For the last half a dozen shows, we bring a cake every time. <laughs> so we take a break, and whoever wants a piece can have it. Very cool. Yes, way in the back there. Other than playing gigs, how much time do you actually spend playing in a day? In a day? No. It's on the day. <laughs> I mean, yesterday I didn't get to practice much. And so we played last night for almost four hours. And then when I got home last night, I practiced. You know, my, my nephew's staying with me, so I was like, I know I need to take a shower and go to bed, but I want to play my guitar. So I got out the guitar and I played for a while. And then, so, yeah, just love to play. Some days I don't get to play, you know, and I miss it. But if I can play a little bit every day, I like to play at night before I go to bed. When I get up. <laughs> 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 yeah. um, any more? Any, any questions here? Yes, Rick. Um, I noticed when uh, your keyboard starts singing a solo, you start and you're playing rhythm. You don't stay in one place. You're moving all over the neck. And yeah, I'm trying to stay out of his way, but also compliment him. But I can't figure out what you're trying to do. Are you playing? Yeah. Well, you know, uh, I could. If we were in G, I'd play this. I'd play all these different G chords. Okay. Like if it's uh, if it's a funky song, like. You know, and if he's up high, I, I won't go up there and get in his way, you know. So I'll stay down here. And sometimes it could be something simple like. So that's like a, like a trumpet or a horn stamp. You know, like a big band. So.
you know, you're a percussionist, your drums, your the horn section, or whatever, you know. I mean, again, I might do this by hand. While the beat's still going. Down, but you're mainly hearing this though. Right? <laughs> Same deal, I'm just using the low note. So. Yeah, so it's like endless variations you can do. Um, Ooh, what it's fun, fun, man. Wonderful. Any last question? Going once, going twice. It's been a busy, full day. We've got a good night ahead of us. Um, can you thank Jack Pearson for being here? Thank you so much. It doesn't matter what level you're at with your playing, just enjoy it, you know? Um, a few years ago, I finally got back to like, you know, when you're a kid and you see a kid go, you know, hear the string, you go, ooh, that makes a sound. <laughs> I finally got back to that because you could lose it, especially in the music industry. Yeah. It's brutal. Um, constant criticisms and whatever. And uh, so you just got to love the instrument, have fun with it. I like complicated stuff. I like old fiddlers sitting on the porch playing the fiddle, you know, up in the mountains. I love all that stuff. Yeah. Would you demonstrate your uh, delay pedal that you don't My have? My delay pedal? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's here with the wah wah. <laughs> studio we couldn't get the delay pedal to match up with the track that was pre-recorded because it was wasn't synced up yeah and so I finally just turned off the delay pedal and just did it like that and everybody's like what did you do <laughs>
Thank you.